If you clicked on this video, you're probably considering a career in finance. In today's video, I'll be giving you my simple framework to help you take your next step in your finance career. And more importantly, some tips that you can use in order to avoid making a mistake and ending up in a dead end job. What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to my channel. And on this channel, we talk about how you can live better through economics. The topic of today's video is going to be how to choose a finance career. So let's jump right into it. Now, growing up, I did not know much about the finance industry at all. And I suspect this is the case for most people when they first start out. A lot of well-meaning people might ask you, you know, which part of finance are you interested in? How can I help you? If your honest answer is, I don't know, then you are not alone. I was in your position just a few years ago. I did not know a lot about the financial industry. I also did not grow up with parents or connections who knew about this industry and were able to impart their knowledge. If you stick around to the end of this video, you will be able to avoid some mistakes that I've almost made. And more importantly, you will get a framework I use to make sure you never end up in a dead end job. So let's move straight into the step by step framework. Let's say you now have some offers on the table. You're now interviewing for various positions. While you are looking to arrange your choices, you are going to want to think two steps ahead. Say you're applying for an analyst role on a particular desk. For instance, if that is a TMT desk, you might want to search that in LinkedIn and search for a job that requires, say, N plus two years of experience. So if you're applying for an analyst role, you might also want to search for associate roles that you are likely to be able to exit into. And that will give you an idea of what types of jobs that you can possibly enter into down the line. And that will also give an idea of your exit options. So that was the first step that you're going to want to take. Similarly, if you're applying for an associate role, you're also going to want to find those key skill sets in the job description and then search for those for an AVP role and so on and so forth. So this will help you think more than one step ahead and take a more long term view to your overall career rather than simply focusing on your immediate comp. Now, the second step in the framework is to think in terms of the asset class or the underlying product. Now, things like modeling skills can be learned. And from my limited experience in project finance, a lot of the financial models are very bespoke. Nonetheless, you will be able to use the same first order principles to approach them. Once you start having banks as your clients, you'll also realize that every bank does its models slightly differently, especially for structured products. So chances are you will need to do some degree of relearning anyway when you are changing firms or exercising your exit option. But understanding of an underlying as a class is accretive. For example, if you're dealing with commodities or if you are dealing with, say, infrastructure, whether it is at a private credit fund, a bank, or any other NBFI, the understanding of the underlying is more or less similar with a few different caveats. You might look at different metrics, for example, if you are an equity versus debt, the fundamental understanding of the underlying is more or less similar. By choosing an asset class to learn about and specialize in, this will help you avoid the dead end trap that I'll be touching on in just a bit. Now, funnily enough, in my experience in London, I actually met this guy who didn't go to any sort of target school or any of the traditional paths to the buy side. However, he once told me that he was able to get into a hedge fund because someone introduced him to the asset class of commodities. So this kind of thing can be powerful if you use it correctly. Finally, if you want to avoid getting into a dead end job, you are going to want to think in terms of mobility not just in terms of the role and which types of institutions that you can join, but also in terms of things like geography. This is particularly true for international workers. And this brings me on to my final point on avoiding the dead end job. Now, the dead end job can have multiple definitions, and it is up to you how you define it. Is it the case where you have loads of clients but can't port them with you if you want to go overseas? Or is it the case where you are limited to roles in a specialized function, say within a bank, that will only exist in a bank and not in another non-bank financial institution? These are all things that you want to consider. And to illustrate this, I'll give my experience of doing the graduate scheme that I mentioned earlier. Now, I realized very early on that by going into a domestic based coverage role, this was not going to be very accretive if I wanted to choose to move back to Singapore, which I ultimately did. The reason is that you're ultimately serving a very local client group that might not have their business activities overseas. 
Now, this would also mean that you're only able to port your soft skills if you choose to move away. Now, is this a dead end job to someone who might look towards staying in the UK long term? Probably not, because they do make quite a bit of money if their deals do well. However, this could be seen as dead end to someone who might want to move their career abroad at some point. So that is an example of how dead end is really for you to define. And this will inform how you choose the asset class that you want to look into, as well as the exit options that seem attractive to you. What do you think? Does this fit with your experience? Do leave your comments in the comment section down below. All in all, that has been how you can go about choosing a financial career and avoiding getting into a dead end role. Now, if you found this message of value, do consider giving this video a like and subscribing to this channel. With all that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.